My entire high school and football career, I never missed one practice. And that was because I wanted to show mental fortitude. And I think a lot of that is because I wasn't as mentally strong as I thought I was. So I had to like almost overcompensate. And I think that's something that men do pretty frequently. If we feel like we have like a deficiency, we either try to not show it or we try to just be that much better. I thought that I could ride through life like that, you know? Welcome to another episode of the Fill the Gap podcast. I'm your host, Cody Allen, and today is a special day. But before I get to that, um, as you guys know, this podcast is hosted by Cuts Clothing. Cuts Clothing is the best men's, we call it for the sport of business, uh, apparel line on the market. Um, I've been rocking with them for years. You guys have heard this episode. You guys have heard me talk about Fill the Gap. You guys know that it's been, this is all I wear. If I'm wearing a shirt, I'm wearing Cuts. Um, they just rolled out a women's line. I highly, highly, highly suggest you guys all check them out. Their clothing is affordable with my coupon code. That's the Cody Allen. You guys get 15% off anything from their store. So check them out, check them out on my site. Um, but yeah, that's not why this is special. They are special. I love cuts, but, uh, the reason why this podcast is special is my boy, John, Jonathan Torres is on the podcast today. I made him wear cuts. If you guys notice every guest I've brought on and make them wear a cut shirt, that's why we can look buff on <laughs> camera and stuff. John and I have known each other for, we did the math the other day, 16 years, right? Cause, that's right, and counting. Because I didn't know you in middle school. You went to Creekside, right? Or were you living in Mexico? Creekside, no, I went to Creekside. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's funny because John and I um, went to high school together. We were friendly, I wouldn't even say freshman year, we really knew each other, we probably knew of each other. You know, oh, well, we played football together freshman year, actually. So it's like we knew each other, but like I was still hella shy. I was still not talking to a lot of people in general. Um, and then uh, I would say sophomore year, sophomore year is when you started making fun of me. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> um, Allegedly. Right, 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 right. Um, what I, okay, I mean, I'll get back to that. But uh, sophomore year and then junior year, I would say, is kind of when we both ex- exploded onto the scene, you want to call it like Sonoma County scene. Um, but John had one of the best defensive football um, seasons in our school's history at the time. Um, and then I was coming into my own on both sides of the ball. But uh, I was talking to somebody today, it's kind of funny, because we have and had similar body types, and we couldn't have played two more different positions. Right. I played free safety, you played, uh, I played free safety and quarterback, you played the end. Um, but Going further, John and I, I would say like lost touch after high school, like lost touch. We probably wrote each other's yearbook, like see you next year, <laughs> <laughs> whatever people do. And uh, we met at our buddy Adam's wedding. It's probably mm. six years ago now, right? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been like six, maybe seven years. Um, shout out to Adam. And uh, I remember John walked up to me. He's like, hey, man, like it was probably Facebook. I see on Facebook you're doing the same kind of shit that I do. And uh that's what got us to this podcast marketing couch. we're doing marketing right right so uh john let us know who the hell you are what you do a little about yourself before we jump in well like you said we've known each other for 16 years and we've seen each other develop over time yeah to the people we are now we've helped each other develop uh i think that what brought us together was sports and that's where we built character and that's where we started finding out about ourselves um and that's really what brought us back together. It was sort of talking about sports and uh, where we went after high school and how yeah. we continued the, our sports career, but also how sports plays a big role in our lives now and how yeah. we live our lives <clears throat> with what we've learned uh, in the past. And that's like the whole premise of this podcast. Uh, so for me, I'm finding out in a lot of ways that sports – and football specifically, I can't speak on much more than football, you know, um, didn't just build my character, but it revealed so much about the deficiencies and maybe strengths that I had in my character. Um, today I want to talk about, I've done a podcast in so long. It's been like a month now because I've had so much shit going on and any other excuse you can think of to make. Um, 
But today I want to talk about something that's very real and present in my life. And I don't know if you can empathize or sympathize. I don't know the difference between empathy and sympathy. I mean, I probably do, but I don't ever use it correctly. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a common mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't feel bad because I don't know don't it. Don't feel bad. Yeah. I feel any more dumb than I already do. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but in sports and in life, I feel like one of the hardest things to do is become vulnerable. And I think the only way to have true success or satisfaction or squeeze the most juice out of life and out of your athletic career is to be vulnerable. So it's kind of like a fucked up catch 22 because it's like in order to be the best, you have to do the hardest thing. And so what I mean by that is I truly believe that in your athletic career, you can't do it alone, especially in the game of football. You just, you just can't do it alone. And so what you have to do is you really have to rely on your teammates, on your coach. You have to give in and give up yourself to know that this person that you probably look up to in a lot of ways is going to do right by you. And you have to let them know exactly who you are. You have to let them know how you're best coached, right? Um, because often in the game of football, uh, we put on this super rough, tough exterior, like, you know, nobody can tell us shit, like just, just yell at me and I'll be fine. Or just don't yell at me. Don't tell me shit, whatever it is. Right. Um, and it's tough because in order to be the best player, the best athlete or the best student athlete or whatever it is, best professional player, I think that you really have to have a relationship with your coach and let them know the best way that your coach, let them know what triggers you, let them know what things that you like, let them know things that you don't like. Um, and I know that in my playing career, I would often put up this, this mask, this exterior, like you could do and say whatever to me and I'm going to be okay and I'll figure it out. And to my, to an extent that is correct. Right. But I don't think that I fully maximized my playing career for a lot of reasons. But one of them is being that I didn't let the people know that were trying to help me, help me. Uh. Um, and I feel like in the game of life, in, in relationships, in business relationships, in romantic, non-romantic relationships, especially like romantic relationships, um, giving in and letting someone know, hey, this is the key to me, right? When I talked about the coach, like give the coach the keys to how, to, how you operate, how you work, so that they can kind of like fine tune and make sure you're the best player. But that sucks because you have to be very vulnerable to do that. In a relationship, it's the same way. I believe that a coach can fuck you up, right? Especially someone like me, and you can speak on yourself, but I haven't seen my dad since I was six years old. And so a lot of coaches in my life have been a father figure. I have my stepdad. My stepdad is a fucking amazing man. He's been in my life since I was eight, nine years old, right? But on this like physical prowess, this athletic side, I did look up to a lot of coaches, you know? And I had good coaches. I had bad coaches, just like I've had good girlfriends have had bad girlfriends, right? Not at bad people necessarily, just like bad at being a girlfriend or bad at being a coach. Um, and in relationships, I think that you really have to get to a point in order to be the best in that relationship and have the best relationship. You have to give this person the keys to how you operate. And it is a motherfucker to do because as soon as you open up and as soon as you let them know what scares you. Let them know what makes you feel bad about yourself. Let them know what makes you feel good. They have the roadmap to make you the best man you could possibly be. And they have the roadmap to absolutely fucking crush you. That's deep. You know? That's um, true. Have you had like any, I don't necessarily say experience in that or how do you feel as far as like your athletic, I know your athletic playing career was different than mine. And then mm -hmm. your relationships over the last 16 years have been different than mine. Yeah, and I think it all ties together. And uh, I think to your point, you mentioned football, which is one of the sports we can relate on. I've played other sports which are different, yeah. uh, like tennis, for example, which is much more individualistic. Right. And you're sort of, you're sort of uh, playing against yourself, really. Yeah. You have to beat a lot of self-doubt. But with football, I think that I always say sports are the ultimate metaphor for life. So <laughs> with football, there's a lot of teamwork. Uh, working together and to your point uh, having trust in your coaches 
is important and you have to become coachable and I think you're right when you say that a coach can really mess you up because yeah. you're putting all your trust in that person um, just like a, a relationship so a coach can break you down as a person on the field but it translates to your life as well because sports you can compare sports to to, to anything even even for me, starting a business, a lot of things I relate back to my sports career, how I talk right. to my, my employees, how I talk to people, how uh, they follow my guidance, how they expect me to coach them, and how I coach them is a lot of the things that I do now, it's what I took from sports. So I think you bring up a lot of good points here. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm sitting here trying to think, like, I've spent so much of my adult life, my playing career, I was could not you couldn't phase me in a lot of ways and that was mental injury physical injury whatever i think i've said it on this podcast before my entire high school and football career i never missed one practice mm. never not one time and that was because i wanted to show mental fortitude and i think a lot of that for me personally is because i wasn't as mentally strong as i thought i was so i had to like almost overcompensate and i think that's something that men do pretty frequently if we feel like we have like a deficiency we either try to not show it or we try to just be that much better at it you know um which is good and bad in a lot of ways um but i mean i've gone through some shit as of late where there's a negative side effect to just trying to overcompensate for not letting someone in or letting people in or showing that something's wrong i am as much as, as good as I am about talking about my feelings, I'm probably better at talking about two people about or listening to other people about their feelings than I am as like really fucking expressing myself and how I feel. Mm. Um, and I thought that I could ride through life like that, you know? Well, I think, I think one of the things that I don't like about football is it has sort of uh, ideas about masculinity and what it means to be a man. And a lot of those things translate to what you're saying, like keeping right. feelings locked inside you don't talk about how much you're hurting you don't talk about uh how tired you are you kind of have to put on this front to be a man on the field and off the field but as i've grown i've realized that those things have changed and my definition of what a man is has changed and right. a lot of that has to do with being vulnerable and being able to talk about certain things and emotions to other people that can help you get through those things and not locking them in because that that will create negative effects Right. And you talk about like negative effects. So like me personally, like I have feelings that I've like, I've locked in, right. Feelings that I don't want to show somebody that I'll be weak or I don't want to show somebody or someone to think that like I'm complaining too much or that I, I don't know, whatever, for whatever reason I've locked in. And what that has done to me is it made, it's had made me act what I consider like erratic, right. I do things that I wouldn't usually do things that aren't like my character. Um, because inside I'm fucking fighting this battle, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm sad. I'm fucking just angry. I'm insecure. And these are all things that I'm talking about just in life in general. And I've been like very, very good about, um, I guess kind of facing these things over the last like five years. Um, especially since I've been like started going to therapy um, but they haven't been really tested. And in my life, in like the last like six months, my insecurities, my sadness, my masculinity, like a lot, a lot of these things have been tested and I've done personally like a very poor job of expressing them in like a healthy way, you know, like, um, but, but you do a much better job now. And me growing up with you and knowing you all these right. years, I know that you're much more open now and you're able to be vulnerable around certain people, even though you still, I think, showcase some of those like tough character per right. personality traits because you are a tough guy in my mind but you've gotten much better at expressing how you feel over the years yeah i mean like um the breakup that i had like i don't know seven years ago eight years ago um that was straight off of coming out of playing football didn't know how to talk to anybody i was still searching for this like trying to identify as like the cool guy because like you go from like playing football and everybody loves you and then you're not playing football and you're just a dude that works at a bank right you're just fucking banker number one <laughs> um <laughs> and uh 
identified, I was, I was trying to grasp at straws, like to like my own, like identity and like version of feeling good about myself. And then I go through a breakup and, uh, it just revealed and created a lot of issues that I was having. Um, and, uh, my way of responding that in the past was I just fucking went to the nightclub and I was trying to date a bunch of people and I was just drinking all the time. And that was a very negative way to deal with my feelings. Mm. Right. And it was like that for a long time. And then I don't know, I don't know if I had an aha moment or a rock bottom moment or what it was, but something just clicked. And I was like, Oh, this isn't, this isn't who I am. Mm -hmm. This isn't who I am. This is starting to become part of my, what I thought was like my character. And a lot of people perceived as my character because I was doing it all the time. And that's how I was dealing with my feelings. But I was like, this isn't me. So I just stopped. I don't know. It's maybe a lot, it was a lot easier for me than it was for other people. And a lot of these insecurities and these issues have faced their like reared their ugly face in my life again, like the last like six months or so. And I've been dealing with them in different ways. Right. Not as, like you said, not as self-destructive as before because I am better at communicating, but I'm not perfect. And I guess even as we sit here and talk about it, like it's okay to not be perfect, you mm -hmm. know? Um, it's, it's funny because, like, in football, like, when you drop a play, X's and O's, um, every single play damn near is designed to score a touchdown. Like, these five people block these five people, this person blocks this person, this person, whatever, and we're scoring a touchdown every single play. Right. And I guess life is the defense, and life is just trying to stop you from scoring a touchdown, right? There's so many different things, right? Mm. And I guess after you snap the ball – it's the adjustments that you make and how you react to certain things and how you deal with things that are really the true testament of how successful you'll be in a lot of things. You mm, know, I can agree with that. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I, mean, I don't know. It's, it's not all X's and O's. It's not, life isn't definitely not X's and O's and there's no straight lines. There's circles and confusion. Um, and yeah. it will test you when you least expect it too. And right when you think, when you think you have things figured out and things are smooth sailing, and you're doing well, something comes up and you gotta, to your point, you gotta learn how to deal with it. And I think that's what set, sets you apart from yourself really, because you have to learn how to deal with situations as you mature. Right, and I think that that's big that you learn. I, I think it's big that you learn. I just saw this Instagram post from this guy, Inky Johnson. I don't know if you know who he is, but he does a lot of motivational speaking. And he's basically just correlating life to boxing, how life is an unforgiving bitch. I think he said, I don't know. Um, and he talked about how you'll get, you'll get hit, rocked, knocked on your ass. You're dazed. You're, you're looking for your mouthpiece and you finally get up. You're looking for the guy counting to 10 and you put it back in your mouth and then you stand up and then you got to go again. Mm. And the amount of times that you get back up really correlates to how much more further you want to push yourself in life. But you got to remember that dude just smoked life, just smoked you with the right hand. Are you going to get smoked with that right hand again, or are you going to block it, right? Are you going to dodge it, whatever the hell it might be? But life is going to come, and they're going to come with a kidney shot next time. And life is always going to knock you on your ass, and it is unforgiving, and they are relent life is relentless, and it will knock you on your ass. And it's crazy because this, I don't know, hostile thing is extremely beautiful too, you know, mm -hmm. participating in life. Well... And it's so easy to say to, I try to catch myself all the time to say like, oh, that guy has it easier because of this, because he has good genetics or because he was born yeah. in a rich family. Yeah, or, but it's, it's, we forget that we're all playing the same game of life and we're all getting knocked down in our own way. So really, uh, that's why sports are so great because we can all relate. And when you're playing the game and when you're the most tired, when you're in the fourth <laughs> quarter, and you can't move and you feel like you have to give up, but your team relies on you, that's when, that's when the real testament of who you are comes out, so. Has there, has there been a time in your life that you felt like you, you just put it all in and you came up short? It was fourth and one and you just went, pushed all your chips in and, and it was fourth and short and you didn't get it. And now how do you respond to this? Like you felt like it's just like, what's the point of even playing the game anymore? Like I'm not. 
Yeah, I, f I felt that both in sports, especially wrestling, actually, where you feel, feel helpless and no matter what you do. Yeah, the I mean, other like guys in, in just, life. Like. It, it's in sports and in life, definitely, I felt that. Uh, in life, I would say mainly in business where you feel like you don't know where else to go and you've already given it everything you have and all your mental bandwidth, but you're kind of in a point where you don't know where to go. And, you, and you, you, I think you have, to, you have to go through that. And you always come out of, on the other side a better person and with more knowledge. Right. And that's what builds your character. But I think it happens at any stage of your business, of your life, of your career. It happens to everybody. You know, and, and that's part of, because I've been, I've been low. I've been low, low, low. Mm. And part of the, the part that keeps you down there is you thinking that you're the, the, you're the only person that's ever gone through this. And how could you possibly get back from this? I've had my fucking heart broken. Mm -hmm. I've just fucked up. I've, I've just, where I was just looking at myself, I'm like, how could I ever live another day? How could I ever look my mom in my face, my girlfriend in my fit in her face, like, uh, in their faces. Sorry. Like how could I get up the next morning? You know? Um, because this is the worst thing that could ever happen, whatever it is. Right. And, uh, I got to realize that I've had to realize that not only is this not very ununique to life itself, like anything that's going to happen to me in my life has happened to somebody else already. And they got through it. I got to realize right. that. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, I got to sit here and realize that no matter what it is, I can get through it because I've been through some shit before and I got through it and then I'll go through some shit again. And the only thing guaranteed in life is that it is the furthest thing from, from smooth sailing. I I'm going through some shit right now. And in two years, five years, six years, eight years, 20 years, I'm going to go through some shit again. I just hope that it's not the same shit, right? That's a part of learning. That's a part of making adjustments um, and growing as an individual, you know? And if it's the same thing, then at least you know how to deal with it better because you've already been through it. Right. And if it's the same thing and it's something that's your fault, then you have to be like, all right, man, like, are you going to keep making this mistake? Are you going to keep right. trying to run a dive or a QB sneak on fourth and one? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to throw the ball this time? You know, mm. um, another thing that's wild and uh, I just found out fucking what, four days ago now is that there are so many things in life that if you don't deal with them, they are going to rear their head uh, just in the nastiest way possible at the worst times. I was four days ago on a crouch crying, a mess, ugly crying for sure, <laughs> <laughs> uh, embarrassingly say. Um, and it was because I was sitting there and I was thinking a lot about my insecurities as an adult man and the feeling of not being wanted and the feeling of not being good enough and the feeling of being rejected or being the wrong thing for someone or someone else um, stems back to the fact that when I was six years old, my dad, for lack of a better term, way of saying it, didn't want me, you know, he chose a different life instead of me. Um, and it just came and I never really said that out loud. I never really opened up to anybody about that because I've always, for me, I've always just been like, Oh yeah, it's cool. My dad's gone. Like, Oh, it's cool. It's cool. He's gone. It is cool to me that he's, or it's not cool. I guess but it's fine with me that he's gone. Um, but I guess I never really got over the feeling that I felt when he left. So it's fine that he's gone now. But when I realized that my dad was never coming back when I was a child, that is a scar or that is a, a wound that went deep and the scars never fully healed, you know? And I didn't realize that until I started feeling inadequate as an adult. And so I'm sitting here and thinking like, there are things that can trigger me and cause me to act like a, I don't know, like a six year old boy again, or mm -hmm. how those feelings all rush in. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. And not know? to say that, uh, that you're ever going to feel, healed completely right. but you are able to identify when you feel triggered and why you're feeling triggered um, 
in a way, I've, I've gone through a lot of stuff too, especially uh, I can relate to the dad situation. I had my dad walk out on me for many years and he was always the biggest villain in my life. And for a long time, I, I just kind of felt pity for myself. But then I realized now it's almost a gift and, I, and you can turn a lot of bad things into a good thing um, because it builds character. It helps you. Like I always felt I had something to prove to myself and to everybody else because mm -hmm. he was gone. And I'm actually really happy about that now because it built so much character and resilience and I learned a lot. So now that I'm reconnecting with him again, I, I can, I'm able to forgive him, but I'm able to thank him too, because right. I feel like I wouldn't be where I am without that. Of course. And, uh, it's pretty similar to me. I talked to my dad one time in the last 24, do I want to do math? 26 years. Um, he called me in 2020. Um, and I can get into that or we can get into that on another episode, but, uh, it was almost cathartic for me to talk to him, um, and let him know I'm not angry at him, whatever this and that. Um, but if you never really address these things and you continue to, to bury them, um, if you have some sort of trauma in your life, uh, it's just come up. And I don't think if we have like dealt with these or you work on a working relationship with your dad or whatever, um, it might affect your romantic relationships, your personal relationships, your relationship with your mother, your relationship with your brother, your relationship with just any mm -hmm. maybe male figure in the rest of your life or any sort of male, um, yeah. Superior, you know, in your life. Cause that's how your parents are viewed, you know, um, it's kind of fuck you up. And I mean, you, you talked about crying earlier and, um, you know, in football, crying is, is you can't cry because it shows weakness. But right. I just cried for the first time in front of you ever uh, yeah. a couple of days ago or yesterday. And it felt good. Um, and I was able to be vulnerable in front of you. And I think that is a testament to our friendship and also what it means to be a man. I think um, I think who you choose to be vulnerable in front of is also important because I think that. uh being vulnerable in front of the wrong people can really fuck you up even more, especially if you're some, if you're vulnerable in front of everybody, then it's just a diamond. You're like, all right, cool. I'll just move on to the next person. But if you don't open up to anybody and then you feel you're invulnerable in front of them and then they reject you or they hurt you. And this is just like the cycle that we continually get in. And, and it showed me that I need to be more conscious of people that are vulnerable with me and me hurting them, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I appreciate you for doing that. Obviously I told you that. Um, and I don't take that lightly because I know how hard it is to open up. And if you don't open up, like I said, at the beginning of the podcast, I don't think that you really get the full, like life experience. You know, I think that it is very, I think it is very beautiful to be able to open up in front of someone and be received in a way that is like warming conversely you open up and somebody's like oh man you're being kind of a bitch mm. that would fucking hurt yeah. and it's, it's good to have good role models and friends that are close to you and that have gone through experiences and that can help guide you in certain situations too right so i want to thank you for that too for giving good advice when i needed it and I appreciate that, man. Um, well, we got to cut this because the camera's about to cut off because DSLRs don't record over 30 minutes. But <laughs> You know, I love you. Um, tell us where we can find you. Uh, you can find me at johntorres.com or Instagram, real John Torres. Yeah, let's do another one of these. Or Puerto Rico, if you're in Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. That's the episode.